Okay, fam, welcome back. <clears throat> so we're going to be talking about Coney, MSTY, and Ybit, and some other news catalysts and important insights into the market. So with that being said, let's get it. Okay, so why am I talking about Coney, MSTY, and Ybit at this specific point in time? You guys are probably like, oh yeah, okay, the yield max funds, whatever, you know. They've been atrocious lately. Yeah, I agree. That's because Bitcoin just hit its previous... Well, it wasn't supposed to be an all-time high, but it hit its all-time high based on what I believe is the um, markets pricing in the spot ETFs because, you know, markets just do that. They price things in ahead of time. That's just how markets work. They're very efficient uh, looking forward in time. But basically what I'm saying by that is I, I think that because the spot ETFs have been priced in, in my opinion, that likely the actual bull market itself has not yet been priced in. Okay. That's what, in my opinion, that's what we're going to see between next month, which we're literally almost at next month and basically March of next year or well, not March of next year, but you know, March usually is kind of around a peak and then we get like a midsummer lull or dump. And then November, December of next year shouldn't be the big grand finale for crypto uh, for this cycle, at least. So the reason why I'm talking about Coney, MSTY, and Ybit right now is because, and again, this is just my opinion, but likely they're going to absolutely moonshot once Bitcoin gets past 75,000, okay? So once Bitcoin gets seven, past 75,000, uh, the miners are likely already going to be moonshotting by the time Bitcoin even gets to 75,000, uh, but they're really going to rip the miners and these dividend crypto ETFs or if they're not these three, they could be any crypto dividend ETF like Bito, um, BitX, any of those. Uh, they could literally rip, like absolutely destroy all time highs. They're going so parabolic. Okay. Once once they go up to they'll like they'll run as they get up to seventy five thousand, and then once Bitcoin gets past seventy five thousand, then it's just like you know glass ceiling. After that point, you know all these different dividend ETFs are just destroying their previous all-time highs every single day and every week. Like it's no big deal. Okay. So let's talk about, uh, the most important thing here. Well, one of the most important things in my opinion, which is that this is going over the Bitcoin monthly returns over the course of history. Okay. So there's a couple things I want you guys to notice here. Uh, usually September is not a great month. Okay. So, and we've told you this forever. I mean, September is a bearish month. Okay. August, September, October, uh, for traditional markets, at least somewhere in there usually is some kind of bearish seasonality and then bullish follows right after. So kind of somewhere between October and, uh, January, February of the following year. Um, but with Bitcoin, it's a little bit different. Okay. So generally speaking, the worst month out of all the months is usually September. So you can see at the bottom here, we have the average of negative three and a half, negative 4%. Okay. So the average and the median on almost every single one of these other months, almost every single one of them with the exception of June is pretty much all green. Okay. So you have the median on December is a negative, whereas the average is positive, but then you have like a very barely even noticeable negative in June and the most negative in September. So there's that. Okay, so we're in September. We're going, we're going into October. October is actually, um, according to this, it, on average, it is the most bullish month for crypto. Okay, you can see down here the average and the median during October's is roughly about twenty three to twenty eight percent. Okay, November is really good too. December's also can also be quite good. Okay, forty seven percent, eight percent, or nine percent, I guess, and roughly about five and a half percent. So in terms of the September's, the thing I want to point out here for Bitcoin. Okay is usually when we have a green September, we also have a green October, November, December, okay? So we've only had, well, okay, it looks like we've had a total of four green Septembers, okay? We had one green in 2015, 2016, and 2023 that we have recorded history on, and what happened the following three months, October, November, December was all bullish. In all three of those instances, this is 100% accurate, okay? It is a 100% probability play. Now, does that mean it has to happen in October, November, December? No, but I'm not going to go against stats, okay? So all three of these times when Bitcoin was up in September, they were also up in October, November, and December as well. Um, 
<clears throat> so yeah, there's that. Uh, and one thing to note here is that 2017 was the final, um, basically the final leg of that bull market year. Okay. 2016 during that cycle was a having year. And then 2015 was the recovery year. Uh, so basically everything except for the final year was completely green. So basically 2016 was the one that we have to most likely compare 2024 to, because again, they're both having years. September was green. So theoretically that means that it's a having year. September was green. So therefore 2024, October, November, December should be green for Bitcoin, right? So <clears throat> I'll get back to this in a minute. But basically the gist of what I'm wanting to say here is you guys can see that the returns, um, even during the halving years, which again is substantial in 2016 in October, it was 15% roughly in 2020, it was 27.7%. And we still have yet to see in 2024. Um, but even in the, uh, recovery year, you had 28 and a half percent in October in 2023. And then, uh, 2019 was also eh, not as bullish, but still somewhat bullish 10%. And then 2015 was 33 and a half percent. So October is expected to be a good month. I'll get back to this in a minute. Okay. So what recently happened in China is that they just announced an absolute monster, monstrous stimulus package. Okay. What China's biggest stimulus since the pandemic means for us investors, as you guys know, what happened during the pandemic Basically, the Fed slammed rates to the floor, markets tanked, the Fed printed tons and tons of money, markets absolutely moonshot and went to brand new all-time highs. Do I think that's going to happen this time? No. Uh, here's what I do think is going to happen, okay? Um, I think maybe the traditional markets might be kind of up, down, sideways a little bit going into October. Uh, and then as we get kind of closer towards the elections, the traditional markets will go up. Okay. But as for Bitcoin and crypto, I'm expecting Bitcoin and crypto to just continue moving up straight through the end of this month, through the beginning of October, through the end of December and into next year. Okay. That's exactly what I'm expecting to happen. I'm not expecting Bitcoin to have any kind of pullback whatsoever. Uh, so yeah, you guys can read into this if you want to, um, but basically the Chinese market just absolutely exploded on this news. I mean, it just went haywire. Um, even silver and gold was skyrocketing too. And I know this because I trade it. Um, but yeah, you guys can see that basically after, and you can read more into this after the details of the stimulus and support for the stock markets were announced Tuesday by the people's bank of China, uh, the nation's benchmark index. Again, this was just not even a couple of days ago. Um, where was it? So it says uh, the nation's benchmark index, the CSI 300, surged 4.3%, the largest jump since July of 2020. Now, when was July of 2020? July of 2020 was after the Bitcoin halving. Okay, we're after the Bitcoin halving right now, and it was right before Bitcoin was going to go to all-time highs. Uh, that was July and that halving year. We're currently in September of this halving year. Okay, so... Bitcoin started moving up and going to all-time highs by October of 2020. Uh, and then it broke all-time highs, I think, if I'm not mistaken, I believe in December. So, I mean, we've already broken all-time highs on Bitcoin. You know, we've retraced like maybe 25, 30% of the charts. I don't remember exactly. But we, you know, we're not coming off bear market lows is what I'm saying. So, in my opinion, Bitcoin is going to be back at all-time highs probably about... <laughs> the same time as it was last cycle about December of this year in the having year, or maybe even sooner than that, because again, Bitcoin as of right now is at roughly about 66,000. So, um, but I just want to show you guys what this actually looks like on the charts. Okay. So this is the CSI 300 index. Again, I'm not sure exactly if this is like the total market for China or it's one individual index. I'm not entirely sure, but literally in one week, you guys can see this thing went from being down to having a golden cross on the RSI and the MACD. And if I measure this move for y'all, you can see just how stupid this is, okay? This market literally had a 15.5% gain in one week. Okay, the S&P puts in like about 10 to 12% a year. <laughs> it put in more than that in a week. So to show you even just how even more ridiculous this is, the last time this thing 
had even close to a candle that looked like that was all the way back here in June and July. Well, basically about June of, yeah, June, July of 2020. Pretty much is the last time that we had candles that looked even remotely close to this one, which again lines up just right before Bitcoin was going to break to all time highs. So it's possible that China may have just set off the crypto bull run in full steam ahead going into the end of the year. Okay. Meaning that Bitcoin's going to all time highs, in my opinion, and alts are going to follow with it. Um, and again, you guys can see on the chart here, based on this Chinese index, that this thing was down for a very, very long time. Okay. Uh, a total here on the weekly chart of 182 bars, or basically 182 weeks, or a total of 1,308 days. Okay. That's like, what is that? Three, almost four years. It's absolutely insane. So I'm going to show you guys even more ridiculous looking charts here. So here's what the daily looks like. The RSI is over already overbought on the daily after just four, three candles after a breakout. Um, and then you can see on the four hourly time frame, this is even more ridiculous looking. The RSI is literally maxed out here. It's at like a 90. And then you have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, eight candles straight up, essentially with this one tiny little pullback. Uh, just an absolute monster move. Okay, so that's regarding the China news. Now let's take a look at Bitcoin. So um, again, this is not really about Bitcoin, but I do want to show you guys this. So the weekly time frame, you can see we are getting this weekly candle pushing above this yellow line. As long as we close above this yellow line, this indicates a basically a, chan, a trend change. Okay. So what should happen is this thing could, should have this candle close above, follow through with more movement to the upside, maybe retest this yellow line and then boom, take off, which indicates this thing has moved from a bear trend to a bull trend. Okay. Uh, but the more important thing I want to show you guys that I posted on X before is we actually have already had one full daily candle close above it. And this is a big deal. Okay. Because again, Every single time, and you can see this very clearly, okay, with the exception of right here. We got one candle close above it, but then we got pulled back down. Every single time this thing tried to close a daily candle close um, above the previous closes, it almost never got there. So we had one little fake out here. And we have one, you can almost can't even see it, uh, one little fake out here. So these candles right here are just right above that line. Uh, this one did not close above. Okay. This one did not close above. This one clearly has closed above. Okay. And we have another daily candle that's pushing above it even further. So again, we'll get continue on continuation on this to the upside. In my opinion, what really matters is not just that we get a candle close above the yellow line, but we also get out of this bull flag. Okay. If we get a green close above this white line, in my opinion, it's game over. Okay. It, we should start seeing Bitcoin fly to the upside. So there is another reason why I pulled up this chart. All right. So I'm going to move this and zoom this out a little bit so I can show you guys this here. Okay. So if I go back to the monthly Bitcoin gains um, or monthly Bitcoin returns, in this case, it probably will be gains because again, we're going into that Q4 of the having year, which is usually pretty bullish. Um, so if I take the average returns here, of 22 and or 23 and 28%. Okay, this is what I want to show you guys. 23 and 28%. And again, that was just assuming that Bitcoin closed at the current price that it's already sitting at, which you know, the likelihood of that happening in my opinion is almost non-existent. It's probably going to close higher. If we just got a 23% gain from the current price of Bitcoin in October, it would push us all the way up to as you guys can see here about 81,300. Now, if I extend this out, I'm going to try to get this exact. If I extend this out to roughly about 27%, you guys can see it would then become $84,000 Bitcoin. So Bitcoin could theoretically, based on history, be roughly about, well, basically at all-time highs, um, well above all-time highs by as soon as the next month. Um, and then, of course, we have the average here of nine and 46%. And then of course it's kind of mixed, maybe like plus 2% in December. 
Um, although the having years usually are extremely bullish. Okay, in December having year, you have 30, 31% in 2016 and 47% in 2020, and probably going to be pretty huge this year as well. Okay, so I wanted to show you guys that. Now I'm going to go over the prices of Kony. Okay, so we've been in this downward trend. <clears throat> um, again, you can see the RSI Golden Cross here. Uh, this particular chart doesn't really matter so much. What matters is kind of the correlation between Bitcoin. So, uh, and where was it? October all the way going out to March. That's when this thing popped off. Okay. So you can see it went from 18 to 30 in literally a couple of months. Okay. So this thing went up $12 in a couple of months from here. It went to again, roughly about 18 to over $30. So if it just did this within a couple of months, you could potentially see Kony at roughly about $26. Again, that's an 88% gain. So Coinbase, um, nice big bounce here on Coinbase. Okay, we're about to get that golden cross on the RSI and the MACD's curling up. That should indicate to everyone here, it definitely does to me, that likely Bitcoins are not Bitcoin, but Coinbase, well, Bitcoin and Coinbase actually are likely going to start smashing to all-time highs. Um, again, we kind of, well, I mean, yeah, last time we were even close to this oversold was back here on the RSI. I mean, was uh, basically back here in October, 2023, what happened? We got that golden cross on both indicators and then the price of Bitcoin just took off well, not just Bitcoin, but the price of uh, Coinbase also took off like a rocket to the upside. Coinbase by itself did nearly a 4x from that swing low all the way up to the high up here. Um, but again, Coinbase's all-time high is much higher than the current price or even the previous swing high. So it's possible it could go even above, even above $400, maybe like $450, $500, something like that by the peak. Okay, so MSTY... So you guys can see this thing's already starting to move up very aggressively. Okay. This thing at the peak was at $46 a share. Okay. So this one came out a little bit late, but it was just right before the peak of the bull run. So I want you guys to understand how ridiculous this is. And this is more of a Bitcoin play, whereas Coinbase is more crypto. Uh, so that includes all cryptocurrencies. So in one, two, three, four, five weeks, this thing went up 127%. Um, again, if this thing... And, and if Bitcoin is truly going to run up for the next six months, it could go way, MSTY and MicroStrategy could go way higher than 127%. I'm just going to tell you all that right now. But if I were just to measure that out, uh, assuming that that was all that happened, um, and I'm not really even, oh, okay. So basically that would put us at roughly about $58.42 on MSTY. Do I think that's possible? Uh, I'm going to be honest. Yes. Yes, I do. Because this move was on a high yielding dividend ETF that pays out monthly where the uh, the dividend yield was excess of 100%. Okay. And this thing still rocketed by more than double in price in literally not even two months. So yeah, I do think it's possible. Okay. So I'm going to go over Beto real quick, which I'm pretty sure is the underline for YBIT. Correct me if I'm wrong in the comments below. Uh, so Beto, you can, you guys can see um, basically right around the same time that MSTY and um, our MSTR and Coinbase started moonshotting when those spot Bitcoin ETFs got approved. What happened? Well, it's pretty straightforward. In October of last year, this thing did a grand total of about 127 percent gain so pretty much on par with what msty did uh, so the important thing to note here is that what we're looking for downtrend break of the downtrend line okay we're starting to curl up into that this is a possible w pattern right here i don't know if you can see it but this red candle kind of w pattern that's a bullish pattern usually that does break out to the upside uh, so the macd is curling up okay you see the blue one starting to slowly point upwards. That's a very bullish sign. Okay, we got a golden cross back here, and then Beto took off. Golden cross back here on the RSI. Beto took off. We already got the RSI golden cross right now, and you can see the MACD golden cross did come a little bit later than the RSI one last time, so probably something similar is going to happen this time. 
And then eventually we get the price above the EMAs and then boom, this thing takes off like a rocket. So yeah, Ybit came out uh, unfortunately after Bitcoin's previous peak. But again, if history is any indication, okay, if I go back here to Bito and I just remeasure this move here so you guys can see what the potential is. Um, see if I can get it. So roughly about 160% gain. So I'm going to go back to Ybit. And yes, I do think this is possible based on what I've seen with um, <laughs> MicroStrategy because again, Ybit and MicroStrategy are almost, as far as I know, they're strict Bitcoin plays. So it's possible for them to match each other um, dollar for dollar, so to speak. So uh, yeah, I actually measured that wrong. Let me redo this. So if it moves from the current price up roughly about 160%. This is so ridiculous, I can't even measure it. Um, Ybit could have a price of roughly about $36.80, okay? But if it just does half of that, let's say, because the dividend yield is so high and it only goes up 80%, it's still gonna be above that previous peak, okay? This thing will be at $25.37, so um, not quite double the previous uh or the current price, but you know, 80% gain is still pretty good. So am I going to be holding these <clears throat> dividend paying ETFs? We do still have them, but am I, am I going to be holding them through uh, long term for the next two, three, four, five years? Uh, the short answer to that is probably not. We'll probably get out of these positions uh, at a profit sometime between now and the end of next year. It kind of just depends on what the price action does. So anyways, hope you all enjoyed this content. Please like, comment, and subscribe, and I'll see you all later. Peace.